this problem we're going to sketch a region and then we're going to decide to integrate with x or with y and then find the area of the region so we have four functions right three functions right here uh, what i did first is i rewrote them because in when i look at this it's a little tricky for me to see that the little commas right there so i just rewrote them and also you can simplify them pretty easily uh, for example, this 2y equals 4 uh, square root x, you can do, uh, multiply by 1 half. And so I just simplified them all and then circled them right here. Uh, the line down here I solve for y, so is more in a nor normal format that I'm used to. Then I graphed them. How did I graph them? Well, the y equals 3 function super easy. Horizontal line, boom. Uh, the other line has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 2. Boom, right there. Now the square root function tiny bit more tricky but if you remember from graphing your square root function has a 0 0 1 1 and looks like this this is y equals square root x and so this function here is just uh, stretched two vertically and so all I did was I plotted the 0 0 and the 1 2 point and then do, drew my best uh, square root curve right along there it's a bit too straight but you get the point. Now in this region, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I got the intercepts by uh, this x equals 1 half right here. Uh, I got that by intersecting the two lines. Um, and I did that visually, but you can absolutely set them, the y values equal to each other and solve. Uh, the one on the bottom happened to be a point that was obviously on the line and the quadratic, and it was x equals 1. So that was easy, I didn't use algebra on that either, but again, you could set them equal, set the y values equal and solve for x. Now this last one, I did actually have to do some math. So what I did is I intersected these two, set them equal to each other, and so I had two square root x equals three on that next line down, and I did a couple algebra steps and squared, and I got nine fourths as the x value. All of this is super tiny, and my pen looks like graffiti right here because it's so uh, I was trying to write so small so what I did is I re redrew the area down here now we have to split this into two pieces if we integrate with respect to x you can definitely integrate this with respect to y the one thing you're gonna have to do is solve all of these for uh, for x. So you'd have to solve for x here, solve for x here. It's not hard to do. Uh, the big advantage if you did this as a y integral is you would only have one big and one small curve. You would, can do this in one single area. Uh, the way I decided to go is as an x uh, integral. And so I went vertical with my cross section. Uh, however, there's actually two separate bottom functions. Therefore, you have to break it into two areas right here. So we got two areas. So there's top one and top two are the same the entire time. And then there is bottom one, first bottom function, second bottom function. And the x values are all up here. We're going to split at x equals one. So that's where we cut this in half right there to get our two different areas. All right, so how did I set this up? We got our area equals and I called it area one plus area two. You can see those in orange over here, a one plus a two. So our first integral is top one minus bottom one dx from a to b. Our second area is top two minus bottom two uh, dx. Now this value is the same here because we split it at x equals one. And I just plugged in all my uh, endpoints here and my top and bottom one top and bottom two and then you're ready to integrate and on this uh you're just going to use the anti-power rule remember the square root x is x to the one half power and you're still using the anti-power rule just be careful with your fractions when you add one uh to one half uh just make sure that you do that carefully it seems easy but it's also very easy to mess up trust me